Okay, so we're going to begin by talking uh, the first part of the semester uh, on Rosh Hashanah. It works out nicely because all the holidays were pushed off this year to later. So hopefully, God willing, we'll get through quite a few of these holidays before they arrive. But even if we don't, it's worth knowing them, okay? So we'll begin with Rosh Hashanah. Before we get there, uh, we need to talk a little bit about time. Now, those who've sat in other classes with me have, may have heard some of this information before. I apologize, but it's worth hearing again, okay? So let's start with the word for time in Hebrew. How do you say time in Hebrew? Zman, that's correct. Zman is correct. Now, the word Zman means time, but what else does Zayn Mem Nun also connote? What else does it mean? Anyone, some other thing we do, we see the word Zman appear in another form. Before we say Birchat Hamazon, we make a, if you have three males, you have a, a Zimun. Same word, a Zimun and Zman. Remember, if two words appear the same, have the same Shoresh, the same root, there's something that's connecting them. That's a general rule in Jewish life and Jewish thought and Jewish philosophy. Okay? By the way, if I write Hebrew word, my advice is to write it in your notebooks. You're going to be expected to know it. It will appear again in the semester and in your midterms and finals. What's the relation between a Zman and a Zimun? A Zman and a Zimun. What does Zimun actually mean? What are you doing when you make a Zimun? You are... You're preparing yourself to say Brecht Amazon. Right? Let's be Mizamen. Right? Let's make a zimun. Let's get ready, guys. Let's get ready, girls. We're going to bench and say Bechad So you're pulling the people together. It's really a preparation. I think that's the best way. That's how I like to translate it anyway. Okay? Why would the word zimun, prepare, be the same for zman time? What's up with that? Why would a zimun and zman... But I like to ask questions, and they're not rhetorical, by the way, those who don't know me. We ask questions, we have discussions. The beauty of being in a low to medium level class is that we can go a little slower and we can get involved. I'm not just going to be speed reading through information, okay? I want to actually understand it, hopefully enjoy it and get something out of it. Yes, Sabrina. Maybe because um, you're, you're preparing for your content at a certain time, like, like while you're, like, before you're eating. Okay, so? So that's the correlation. But what's that going to do with time? That you're saying in a certain time, and you're saying you're talking about zone while, like, you're preparing for your talking about zone before you eat, so that's a, like a certain time period. Okay. What's that going to do with zman, though? You've got to jump from here to here. You're right. You're preparing people to say Bechal Amazon, and the time is being. This. How about it's not us preparing? Oh, yeah, go on. Yeah, that's not to do with this. That's, <laughs> that's it. Okay, it goes like this. Check this out. This is maybe a new idea for, for many of you. Zman means the time is prepared. Hashem prepared the time. Time is something. Time was actually part of creation. When Hashem created the world, He created a physical world. He created a spiritual world. He also created something called Zman. Time. Time is something. It's tangible. For us, it's real. This is going to be very, very important. If you don't understand this or appreciate this idea, the rest of the semester is going to be fairly meaningless to you. This is really an introduction, but it's a key linchpin to everything else we're going to discuss about Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and even Hanukkah. The Hanukkah is going to be a weird one, We'll see, because that's a rabbinic holiday. So how that fits into the schedule is going to be a little unusual, uh, but fascinating at the same time. But let's just talk about the Torah holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Hashem prepared the time, which means that when Hashem created the world, He created time. And not only that, there are certain times in the year that are prepared for us. I'll say that again. There are certain times in the year that are prepared for us, that are set up for us to reach. Let me give you a clear example so you really understand this very important idea. And then we'll look at some of the sources inside. 
Does anyone know one of the ways we refer to the Jewish holidays in general? They refer to the Moedim in plural, Moed, Moed. Let's do that inside, right? It's a Moed. A Moed is how we refer to holidays. Now, actually, we take that word to mean holidays, Mem, Vav, but actually, that's not what it means. How am I going to find out what that word really means? It refers to the holidays, the Moedim. We say, Moedim B'Simcha, Happy Holidays. But that word appears somewhere else. <clears throat> Does anyone know where else we see the word appear in Jewish life? I'll give you a clue. It's not a holiday, it's an object. An object. Yeah? I was going to say Modani. That's different. <coughs> That's Modani. This is Moed with an I in it. Like berries? The what? Like berries, like an O? Uh, no. It's not with an I in Anyone? Part of the Mishkan? You had the. You know what? Maybe you're all in the right class, actually. <laughs> this is good. The OL Moed. The O-L, anyone remember that, the O-L Moed? Am I taking you back to Jewish day school? What was the O-L Moed? Okay, this is important. So the O-L Moed, I'll write it down for you. The O-L Moed was where the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, the Aaron and the Luchos was kept in the Mishkan. So the Mishkan was a general structure that had the menorah in it and the Shulchan and the Mizbeach. Inside there, you had a curtain that separated out where the Aaron, the tabernacle was. Okay, the Ark of the Covenant was kept. It's called the Ohel Moed. Ohel means a... Ohel means a... Ten, thank you. What's a Moed? It means a meeting place. The meeting tent. Why was it called the meeting tent? Who... Met who there and why? So Moshe Rabbeinu used to go to the Old Moed, and that's why Koresh Baruch Hu communicated to him. It was the tent of meeting. You with me? The Old Moed, that's what it's referred to in the Torah. So now we know the word Moed actually means meeting. So let's do this again. If the Jewish holidays are referred to as the Moadim, in plural, Moed, in the singular, what's happening there? We are meeting Hashem at certain points in the year. Okay? So let's do this again. We're going to go slow. Time is prepared a certain way. It's Zman. It's prepared. I'll explain that more in a moment. There are certain times of the year where we meet the Kodesh Barakal. Or we are met. It's actually a two-way relationship. If you meet someone, both have to do something to get to that place. Moshe Rabbeinu went to the Oel Moed. That's why Hashem spoke to Moses when he was in the desert. Nevoah came through the Oel. Actually, came through the Keruvim, right? That little gap between the Keruvim on the Ark, and it was spoken to him through that point. Okay, that's the Oel Moed. He met a Kodesh Baruch. That's where his Nevoah came through and from. We also go through the year, and we have certain meeting places. I mean, we have to meet each other. We're really meeting Hashem. Now let's go even further. So we're going from in to out. What's the Hebrew word for a year? A shana. A shana. Okay? Now the word shana also means something else. Remember, this is how it works, by the way. Really, when you study Judaism, this is what you're doing. You find the Hebrew words, you're not sure what they mean. You read the art scroll or the film time and you figure out what it is. Yeah? But then you're like, well, how do I know? They know. I mean, how do they know that's what it means? Because that word has to appear elsewhere and has to fit in. Now, the word shana can also mean something else. What does the word shana mean? Year. Year is what it means. But what else does it mean? A little bit, but it really appears in another way. Who said that? Very good. How do you know that? Shinui. It means a change. Hold on to that. Put that down your notes. Shinui does mean that. But what else do we see the word shana 
in another form. I'll give you a clue. This time, it appears on Shabbat. It appears on Shabbat, on your Shabbat table. Ooh. It's an expression for objects on your table. And it is your Lechem Mishnah. Lechem Mishnah. What's Lechem Mishnah mean? Lechem is bread. Mishnah means doubled. Doubled. Double up. Where else do we see this? It's double. It's a repeat. It's a repetition. Two breads, right? Lechem Mishnah. You have to have Lechem Mishnah at every meal on Shabbat. So it's two breads. Lechem Mishnah. What's the fifth name of the five books of Moses referred to? In English, actually. Let's do the English one first. So in English, it's Deuteronomy. What's Deuteronomy? Duet. What's a duet? Two. In Hebrew, we call it Mishnah Torah. Why Mishnah Torah? It's a repetition. Why is the fifth book considered a repetition? Because many of the laws, not all of them, but many of the laws are repeated as you go through that book. Why they're repeated is not for now. It's interesting because that's preparation for going to Eretz Yisrael. So Moshe Rabbeinu repeated the ones that were pertinent for the entry and for the Jewish people's existence in the land of Israel. But there's that word again, repeated. It's doubled up. Why would the word year also mean to repeat or to double up? Are you following? Is everyone getting my teaching style already? Those who know me know my style already. What's it, what is this telling me? I'm learning this. These Hebrew words are revealing very important information to me. Very important. Because the year repeats itself. What does it mean to repeat itself? It doesn't repeat itself. You just go through it once and it's done. No! That's not what happens. You see, you go through the year and you travel through it. And as you travel through the year, you get to various meeting places along the way that are zimun, that are set up by a Kodesh Baruch by God. At the beginning of time, there's a fabric of time. Time is a, a tangible, just like you have place, makom, you have time. That's actually incorrect. This is how the secular world views time as a time line. Those who have not taken my class before, how do we refer to the Jewish version of this? What does it look like? Is it a line? It's not a circle. If it's a circle, you'd see yourself again, and that'd be very trippy. Believe me. Believe me, I've had certain holidays where I felt like that. But it can't be a circle, because you go back to where you started. It can't be a circle, so it's gonna have to, if you have a class again, you can't do it. Sorry, just this one question. Because I want people to think. If it's not a line and it can't be a circle, what's in between that? A spiral, that's correct. Like a corkscrew, like those parking lots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how it comes up. I know there's been some my class before, we've done this before, but it's important information. And when you get to a certain point, you move forward. So here's year one, follow carefully. Here's year two, and there's three, and there's four, and there's five. I've moved ahead one year, but I'm in the same place. I'm in the same place as I always was. Just like I can revisit the same location year after year, I can go to Times Square on New Z, which I don't recommend. Uh, did it once, never again. And I can go back a year later. I could leave something in Times Square in 2015 and then refind it 2016, although I'm a year later, because the place is the same. Time is like a place. The two go together. When you live in this world, you are stuck in two realities. Time, zman, and space, which is called in Hebrew, makom, which interestingly is one of the names of God. Because God is every space and not yet not held within it. So the Ramban understands it. Let's tie this all together. Time is prepared. Shana, but it repeats itself because you go through the same time. We're actually not so interested in the year you're in. The actual year is not so important. I know in other classes, in history classes, you're about the years, you're going to learn 1776, 1942, and in Judaism you've got to know one year. The year the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, as far as I'm concerned, and received the Torah, which is year 2448. We're not so interested in the year itself. What you're interested, what we're, fast, what we're obsessed with, is the time of year. Where you are in the year. Because that's going to reveal so much to us. Because 
Follow carefully. When you get to a certain location, you're in the same place you were a year ago, the same place your ancestors were in 500 years ago, the patriarchs and were in thousands of years ago. It's the same place. That same energy exists. Am I making sense over here? Now, this is important because when you get to that place in the year, there's going to be something you're going to have to take out from it. It's Rabbi Dessler, who we'll see in a, in a moment. Rabbi Dessler says, what you actually are doing is you're on a train and you travel through time and you reach certain points in time. One of them is called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah was set up for us, actually we'll see, for the entire world, not just Jewish people. Pesach is just the Jewish people. Rosh Hashanah is all mankind, we're going to see. And you get to that place, and you get what you need, which is going to be his hatches, newness. We'll see what that means. And then 10 days later, you get to Yom Kippur. And then four days after that, you get to And then you travel into the darkest time of the year, and you get to Hanukkah. And then you move further into Purim. And all these aren't just commemorations of those events. You actually enter into the same place, Makob. I'm seeing some blank faces, which is good. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? If you don't, please ask. Do not be shy. If you don't ask at this level, you're never going to get it. Which part do you want to repeat? The last, the last so as you travel through time, you get to various stations. We can see the rough desk. What is inside this piece? And you arrive there. You're like, okay, I'm here. What am I doing here? I've traveled through time. I've got a train. Think of going on a train. I'm moving through the year, and I get to my first stop, Rosh Hashanah. What am I doing here? I'm not just commemorating an event. I'm in the same place. There's something here I need to pick up and take. There's certain things I'm going to have to do. Certain mitzvot that you have to do at each station. Those mitzvot help you attain what you need to obtain. So what you do in that place is related to what you're going to get out of that place. So Rosh Hashanah is all going to be about the... What object do we use? Shofar. Shofar is going to be the mitzvah of the day. That means there's something about that mitzvah which we're going to go into. Because you discuss Rosh Hashanah, discuss Shofar, then it's going to reveal something unbelievable to me and it's going to help me understand Rosh Hashanah. It's not just a random thing we happen to do on that day. The two are related. You get to Yom Kippur, and you get a fast. Actually, you do tshuva, as we'll get to. That's really the mitzvah of the day. The fasting just helps you do that. Sukkot is all about the Arab minim and the sukkah. The space you walk into is related to the time. Even the agricultural time. We'll see these are agricultural holidays. What's happening in the world? What's going on with the flowers and the fruits and the vegetables and the blossoming? It's all related. I'll give you a wild example of this. This is not my example. Actually, Rashi mentions this uh, in the Torah itself. And I mentioned those who sat in my class before. You've heard this before. I apologize, but just to get... You know what I'm saying? We know Avram Avinu was not Jewish. He didn't have the Torah. The Chazal say he knew the Torah, but he didn't actually have a Torah itself. The Torah happened many years later. Yet we know that he kept Pesach. How could Abraham have kept Pesach? Pesach is all about commemorating the exodus from Egypt. Is that correct? So how can you say Abraham? He ate matzah, right? When he had those three malachim, the three guests come to visit him, he gave them ugot. What's ugot? So in modern we call it cakes, but that's not what it means. In biblical Torah language, ugot we see is what the Jewish people took out of Mitzrayim with them. It means matzah. It's a code word for matzah. Why did he matzah? Because it was Pesach. How could it be Pesach without Ravina? How's that possible? Pesach is all about commemorating leaving Egypt. We weren't even in Egypt yet. Do you hear the question? Do you hear the question? If you don't hear the question, you're not going to hear the answer. What's the answer? There's a time of the year called the 15th of Nisan. That's Pesach time. Always was. From the beginning of creation, Hashem set it up that way. Happens to be Abraham, Abraham Avinu was on the Madrega, the level where he could tap into the energy and know this is freedom time and this is the food you eat on it. Which means that we don't celebrate Pesach because the Jewish people left Egypt. It's the other way around. The Jewish people left Egypt because it was Pesach. I'll say that again. 
we don't sit and just commemorate an event. We do commemorate an event. That's part of it as well. But that's not the main point. We don't just sit on pace and talk about what happened to our ancestors. We do something very different. The reason our ancestors left Egypt because there was a time called Pesach. There always was. What's that? Freedom time. Now, we're not going to discuss Pesach this semester. But if you understand what freedom's all about, you've got to understand Pesach. Are we clear on this so far? Does that help you? Chloe, are we together, sister? If you got it, you ain't got it. Just dying, that's the way it works with this. Okay, yeah. If you need to go, you go. I prefer people went before, though. Um, it's not high school. Okay, do we have other words? Are we, we put this together? Yeah? So we have this month. The year repeats itself because you go through the year again, you get to the same place every single year at that time. Okay? And that's what Shana is, there's repetition. Yes. So you're saying that it doesn't commemorate it. It is freedom time. Pesach doesn't commemorate it. Pesach is freedom time. That's what it is, in essence. Okay. Happens to be the Jewish people left Egypt, and that's how we relate. We relate to it through that event. But it always was, which means the Jewish people could have left the year before. They couldn't leave the year after, because had they not left then, the Haggadah tells us, they would still be there. They would never have got out. Because of the That's the channel, the portal opened. That's the way it worked. Okay, let's look inside our books, and let's see this inside. Now we have the background. Okay, so what we clarified is that there are various milestones, Moadim, in the Jewish calendar. And the Jewish holidays don't merely commemorate these events. Right? There's not a static linear progression that flows. It's more of a cyclical spiral of progression that we go through. Okay? Now, how Shabbat fits into that is weird because Shabbat comes once a week. The other holidays I hear, the other holidays are, are, are dictated by the time of the month. Shabbat is dictated by days of the week. So that's its own entire reality, which has to be understood. But it, it is part of this, but it's kind of like surpasses all this. Shabbat is actually superior to all the Jewish holidays in that sense that we get it once a week. Okay? So Shabbat, we're going to see, has a lot more to it. This is why King Solomon in Ecclesiastes, in Kohelet, says, everything has its time. Right? There is nothing that does not have a particular time. There is no man who does not have a particular time. Okay? That's how we understand it. Call the Vatsarach al Zman the Yeshloi Ace Muchad. Everything has a time and a place. That's what he says, the Khal Yesh Zman the Ace Lachol. Okay. Everything's got its time. Meaning that even the holidays themselves are held in a certain time as well. Okay. So what we're gonna see is that as we travel to each holiday, we're gonna go from we're gonna jump this semester from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, then to Sukkot, and then to Hanukkah, although that's really kind of like out of the cycle, but these are the main cycles. We'll see they're all going to be connected. Rosh Hashanah has got to be connected to Yom Kippur, and Yom Kippur has got to be connected to Sukkot. We're going to see it's not a coincidence that Sukkot appears four days after Yom Kippur. It's not that to drive us crazy. There must be some connection, because it's in the same place, same time of year. Are you with me? We don't see a connection. One's to Shuva, and one to sit in the Sukkot. We're going to see, no, no, no. They're two separate holidays, but there's some connection that's going to bind them together. Actually, all the holidays, really, are going to make one big fabric, as, I've, as I'll show you in the book in a moment. Okay? And then in each holiday, we get a gift, a matana. It's a gift, just like you go to visit your aunt and uncle. Everyone's got that aunt and uncle, will buy you a nice gift whenever you go there. Hopefully it's cash, because, you know, the gifts are never that good, right? So to every Jewish holiday, Hashem gives us a gift. There's a gift to pick up. But you've got to do the stuff to get the gift. Right? You've got to do something. You've got to blow the shofar. You've got to sit in the sukkah. Right? You've got to eat the matzah. You've got to do something. Just by doing that thing, you get the gift. It's dependent upon our hishtadlut, our actions. Okay? And the most important, of course, is Shavuot. Now, Shavuot's going to be a weird one because we don't actually do anything. Why is not for this semester? Because Torah is too big for any one particular object. It can't be limited to one space. But that's not for now. Okay. Go to page three. So we'll do the Hebrew inside together. 
l'chol had mushuleshes and So we can see there are three foot festivals. We're going to look at one of them this semester. Why? Why are they called the shalosh regalim? Why are they called the three foot festivals? Yeah. Right, three times he would walk to Yerushalayim after Arabias, right? So they call the Shalosh Regalim, the three foot festivals, yeah? We're going to look at one of them. Wait, why? Because we would go by foot to Yerushalayim. Three foot festivals. They are Pesach, they are Shavuot, and they are Sukkot. We're going to look at Sukkot. But in order to get to Sukkot, you're going to have to go through Rosh Hashanah Kippur. Rosh Yom Kippur are going to be a preparation for Sukkot. That's really what they're going to be doing. I mean, they are things in and of themselves, but we're going to see they are connected. Okay, so we have these three festivals. One, two, three, like a triangle. And each one has its preparation and this gift that comes with it. Okay. So, yes, uh, each one's got its own special gift. Which is going to awaken and give uh, light to the Jew. And that's going to be the, the main part of the Chag. There's going to be one thing, one theme. One theme is going to come out of every single holiday. Right? Thematic. We saw Pesach already. Pesach is... What's the theme? Freedom. What's the theme of Shavuot? That's pretty easy. Torah. What's the theme of Sukkot we're going to see? No. Theme of Sukkot, anybody know? Yeah. Seminary girls in Israel, come on. <laughs> Maybe around the right place. Yes, what's the theme of Sukkot? What's the one thing, actually two really, but they're connected. There's two things. Simcha, v'samachta v'chagecha. Simcha. Now Simcha is, you refer to in Sukkot more than any other holiday. It's mentioned elsewhere, but specifically by Sukkot. Why? What's the methodology? It. Someone said it already. I missed it. Emunah, faith. We're going to see the theme of Sukkot is emunah, which is going to lead you to being happy. Faith makes you happy. Why you got to leave your house, live in a leaky hut in order to have that? That we're going to get to. That we're going to have to get to. But that's where it's going. That's where it's going. On Pesach, you want to go free? You got to drink those four cups of wine. You got to eat a matzah. You got to read the Agada. That's going to set you free. On Sukkot, you got to leave your house. Sit a sukkah, take the albuminium, the four species, shake him around. That's going to make you faithful and make you happy. That's the theme that goes with it. Okay, Rosh Hashanah is newness, his hatshut. And Yom Kippur, we're going to see when we get there, is to shuvah repentance, return to God. Right, it's, all, it's all one flow. The entire year is various times that flow into one thing. That's what he's saying over here. Sukkot is time of happiness. The rabbis tell us, they mention this in the tefillah. That's the essence of the holiday. That's where we're taking this. Okay. So let's let's map this out together. And this was done very kindly by Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch. And he says, if you want to understand the holidays, you've got to see how they connect to each other. Because there's a fabric, there's a shana, there's a repetition of time. Okay? So you can see this in your books on page three at the bottom. So first we have Shabbat, and that consecrates life. Right? That's Makadesh Shet Azman. But we won't do that now, but the time is sanctified because of Shabbat. Okay, Shabbat predates all the holidays. Shabbat exists from creation of the world. Okay, Hashem rested on the seventh day. So Shabbat is going to go right back to the beginning. And Shabbat is the first time we see the word Kadosh mentioned in the Torah. That's consecrate, uh, consecration. That means any time of Kadosh you have in any other Jewish holiday, or anything else in Judaism, comes from Shabbat. Okay, it is the Makor HaBracha. It is also the source of all Kadosh. Same time. Hashem created the world. Part of creation of the physical world was Hashem setting up time. At which precise moment at creation? There is an opinion which goes like that, but on a, it could be, it could be, 
But still, we follow the seven-day pattern, seven-day cycle that we, that we are plugged into right now is, is part of that cycle, okay? So that's Shabbat. So Shabbat is actually Kedusha. That's really, I mean, I'm, I'm not doing it justice. This is its own semester, which we'll do in a year's time if you're still with me at that point, if you survive. Mm -hmm. So then you go from Shabbat to, to Pesach. Why do we start at Pesach? Why don't we start at Rosh Hashanah? Why is the first month on Pesach? If Rosh Hashanah is New Year, actually that's not what Rosh Hashanah means by the way. Rosh Hashanah does not mean New Year, it means something else, we'll get there. But why are we beginning on Pesach? Why are we mapping out Shabbat? So Shabbat is the crown. Shabbat is the crown of everything, yeah? Here's Shabbat. And we're like, you know what, after that, you go to Pesach. Why Pesach? Why does Pesach begin? Shouldn't we begin with Rosh Hashanah? So Pesach, we're going to see there are four new years. One of the new years is Rosh Hashanah. We're going to spend our semester talking about it. That's new year for creation of the world. Actually, creation of mankind, to be more specific. The world was created seven days before that. Rosh Hashanah, we're going to see, is creation of mankind. Pesach is creation of the Jewish people. So we're going to start the day on Pesach. Hello, Esti. Uh, I have one. Okay, There's a little one over here. Okay, oh, wait, is there another big one? one. Uh, this room does not have one. If there is one, it'd be great. Okay, okay. We don't, I don't need one right now, okay. but that would be nice. Thank you. So Pesach begins the new year for the Jewish people because we went free. The world didn't go free, so we start with, that's why when we start the months, how do we start counting the months? We start with Nisan, Iyar, Tzivan, Tammuz, we follow the Jewish months. You've got to know your months as well, by the way. <laughs> And aside, we saw when why we saw the Nissan because that's what the Jewish people were created, that's our beginning. Okay, you following me? So, we start with Pesach. Okay, then we go from Pesach, we go to well, what was the next thing that happened after Pesach? We left the we left Mitzrayim, right, in the year 2448, and then we went to Har Sinai. How many days later? How many days after leaving Mitzrayim? Did we get to Har Sinai? 49 days later. If you didn't know that, you're probably in the right class as well. 49 days later, we get to Shavuot, right? That's Shavuot. So we travel to Shavuot. That's the next station that we get to. So first of all, life is consecrated, right? Then we have the physical creation of the Jewish people. Pesach is the physical we went free. Physically, we were saved. The mission wanted to kill us. So Pesach is the physical creation of the Jewish people. Right? Then we get to Shavuot. What Shavuot? Were we physically free at that point? Yes. Yes. The Mitzrayim, the Egyptians weren't following us out to this point. We were free. So what Shavuot? That's the spiritual creation of the Jewish people. Nachon? We plug it in together. Then we travel on through the year, and the next big one we get to is going to be Rosh Hashanah. Yeah? Now Rosh Hashanah is going to be the examination of life. It's like the project, the company has been set up. And we're going to see this is going to be the metaphor which I'm going to use again and again and again, so get used to it. The company is set up. Once a year, you have to examine whether the company is going well. Right? The tax man cometh. The IRS wants to know what's going on. They start checking the books. You don't like that. It's scary. You're confident you're going to survive it, but it's scary. It's a little work, right? Days of awe, we refer to them as, right? You remember Nora'im. It's that matter of awe that comes with it. So Rosh Hashanah is the examination of life. Why is Rosh Hashanah? Because that's when mankind was created. When you examine whether we're doing the right thing on the day we're created, because you've reached that point again. You've re-reached the original creation of mankind. Right? Because it's related to the first ever Rosh Hashanah. Every year you get to the same point. Creation of mankind. That means every Rosh Hashanah there's a new creation. 
for you to create yourself. You hear me, sisters? We together on this? You create something new over here. So Rosh Hashanah is the nation of life. Right? And that's going to be connected to Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is part of that. Although, as we're going to see, these two are actually in the wrong order. These two are backwards. We'll see why they are done that way. It should first be Yom Kippur, then Rosh Hashanah. That's not the way that works. When we get to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, we're going to figure out why they are flipped. But generally speaking, this is to examine life. Like everything we do over here is one big examination. And we know how Stern students love exams. Okay. At least you're examining life. This is a chance to see how the, uh, you know, the company is moving. Whether this be course correction. At least that's six months later. Halfway through the year. We stop. We re-examine. Then we get to Sukkot. If this goes well, what do you do? You have a party. That's going to be Sukkot. Sukkot is going to be related to that. And Sukkot is also the physical survival of the Jewish people and Hashem's protection. Okay? That's also going to be the physical survival of the Jewish people. So Sukkot, watch very carefully, this is important. Sukkot is connected to Pesach. Physical creation, physical survival. That's why you're going to live in a sukkah on Sukkot. To show you put your faith in Hashem, you live in a leaky roofed hut. Physical creation, physical... Oh, one second. So Shavuot is the spiritual creation of the Jewish people. So what's going to correspond to the spiritual creation of the Jewish people? Now, Sivat Torah is, a, is going to be part of it, but what's the real holiday? Shemini Atzeret. Shemini Atzeret is going to mirror Shavuot. That's how they understand it. Okay? Shemini Atzeret is going to... This is the physical creation, spiritual creation. This is the physical survival and appreciation. This is the spiritual... Shemini Atzeret is its own holiday. People think it's part of Sukkot. It's not. It's not. It's related to Sukkot, but it's its own holiday. Just like Rosh Hashanah is related to Yom Kippur, but the two separate holidays. Just like Pesach is related to Shabbat, but the two separate holidays. We're going to see that Sukkot is related to Shemini Atzeret, but the two completely different. You do not sit in a sukkah. So I've cast a little bit of it, but there's no mitzvah of sitting in a sukkah on Shemini Atzeret. Okay? We're going to take Simchat Torah and we're going to throw it onto. Shemini Atzeret, but actually they're it's two different, the real holiday Shemini Atzeret. Okay, are you following? Can you see the pattern over here? Once again, start with Shabbat. Everything is holy. One second, my darling, let's just go through this. Shabbat, everything is holy. We jump to Pesach, physical creation. I hadn't left Egypt, we will be dead. Then we jump to the spiritual creation of the Jewish people, that's Shabbat. Okay, then we're going to be like, okay, fine. Now we're going to figure out, is everything going well? Is this going well? We're like Rosh Hashanah Kippur. We get through that period, then we're like, fantastic. I got through that. I'm now going to jump into Sukkot. We'll see why that's going to be the best place to jump to right after Yom Kippur, the two are related. We'll see there's even a custom, many people do start building their Sukkot or do some extra work on the Sukkot, not Yom Kippur. You tie Yom Kippur to a mitzvah. You jump into the cocoon that is a Sukkot. Okay, and that's going to be the uh, physical um, appreciation and existence of the Jewish people. Right, as he puts it, the physical survival. Okay, those are the... We'll see the, the original Sukkot, whether the clouds or the tents, and then we jump to Shemir Atzeret, which is going to be the ultimate expression of spiritual existence. It's all about Shemir Atzeret. It's all about Shemir Atzeret. All roads lead this. The most unidentified, misunderstood, underappreciated holiday. You ask most secular Jews, you know what Pesach is? They're like, eh, you know, sure, Pesach. Right? Shavuot, Shavuot. Right? You get a Sukkot, like, yeah, I sat in a Sukkot once in day school. You get Shemini Atzeret, never heard of it before. It's all about Shemini Atzeret. And we're going to be, getting, we'll be examining Shemini Atzeret as well. Okay? Yes, and then yes. Can you explain this timeline? This is how you men look at celebrating the holidays. As one holistic whole that you travel from start to finish. So it really starts on Pesach. It really starts on Pesach, yeah. 
Yes, although we don't consider the first month of the year. It was the first month of the year. There's four New Year's. That's a lot of partying for the Jewish people. We're going to see there's four of them. The one that we start the counting of the months is Pesach. That's why you say, well, how do you name the months? You say Nisan Iyah. Tishrei is six months later, and that's all of mankind. Right? Pesach is when we began, because we left Egypt, so that's our beginning. Our beginning is Nisan. So the first of Nisan is one of the first four New Year's. The first of Nisan. And a lot of good things happened to the Jewish people in Rosh Chodesh Nisan. There were ten great events that happened to the Jewish people on the first of Nisan. We're going to come to it. Yeah. What's Shemini I don't know. Great, you're in the right place. Shemini Atzeret is the eighth day. You do seven days of Sukkot, you get to the eighth day. And Shemini means the eighth. Atzeret means to stop or refrain. Different opinions, how you understand it. You stop or refrain. Okay? You're about to leave the Sukkot, you're like, one second, stop. Let's pick up the whole thing and pull it together. Okay? It's the eighth day. Oh, it's not the eighth day of Sukkot. It's the eighth day after Sukkot. Yeah. I don't know. What can I say? Something good? Spiritual existence. Right. Thank you. It's inside, yeah. Okay. And then Purim and Hanukkah blended it now. It's going to be weird because Purim and Hanukkah didn't exist then. But you're going to have to say that actually they did. And we'll see the rabbis bent over backwards to figure out or see some hint to Hanukkah and Purim in the Torah. Why do they do that? Why do they get so obsessed? It's for this reason. Because you can't create a new time, either it exists or it doesn't exist. And so they'll say, you know what, Esther's in the Torah, and Mordechai's in the Torah, even Havan's in the Torah. They didn't exist then. You'll see hints to it in the Torah, it has to be, because the time itself has to reflect it. We just discovered it much later. That's how they kind of, they, they're, they're pushed to do that, because you can't create a new time. Either it's there, or it's not there. Nachon? Yeah. When you say Torah, are you saying the five books? Five books of Moses is what I'm referring to when I say Torah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Turn over your pages to page four. Okay. Hanukkah is going to be the, the, the big finish, if you will, the spiritual survival of the Jewish people in exile and the affirmation of faith. Everything we discuss about Hanukkah is also going to take us to that world as well. Okay? It's all about Galut. We were in Israel. We were exiled by the Greeks. When we get there, we'll see how that fits in as well. That's, the, that's what we like, a light at the darkest time of the year. Hanukkah is going to represent the exile in its entirety. Galut in its entirety. Okay? We did a lot today. Any questions on anything I said today? Yes. They, they are that only they will see. They kind of really, they don't mean that they do. They don't yet, they do. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. They're at later stages in Jewish history. Okay, fantastic. Great first class. Well done.